Today on the CTV News at 5, a desperate search for a missing Lethbridge woman. Plus, a reminder that more motorcycles are back on the road. And the ponies hit the track at the Rocky Mountain Turf Club. CTV News with Jackie Scandlebury. Good afternoon. Police and volunteers have been scouring the Lethbridge River Valley and neighborhoods on the west side searching for a missing woman. Right now, police are conducting an aerial search for this woman, 44-year-old Anna Rose Klucherichik. She was last seen by her family when she went to bed around midnight Wednesday. In the morning, she was gone. Police and relatives are concerned because the woman needs medication for a health condition. Jeanette Roche has more on today's search. Since before the sun came up, search and rescue volunteers have combed trees, hills and bushes in hopes of finding this woman, 44-year-old Anna Klutrichuk. According to police, Klutrichuk was last seen by her family at her home on Chippewa Crescent when she went to bed around midnight on Tuesday. But on Wednesday morning, she wasn't in her room. Her family reported her missing around 7 p.m. Wednesday night. Uh, in, in this particular case, uh, it's very out of character for this lady to be away from her house for this amount of time. Uh, she has no previous history of going missing and coupled with the fact that she requires daily medication, uh, it is a bit concerning. Police say there's no evidence to suggest foul play at this time. About 45 volunteers from as far away as Pincher Creek and Medicine Hat missed work today to come here and comb the river valleys and the coolies in search of the missing woman. The search area has also expanded to the residential areas in West Lethbridge. Uh, our uh, ground pounder people have been searching, urban searching homes, uh, checking backyards, garages, trailers, cars. Um, we've, we've done a lot trying to eliminate where she could be. The Lethbridge Area Search and Rescue is being assisted by the Canadian Search Dog Association. Dogs are an, a, a fantastic tool for the police to use on a search and rescue mission. They can cover large areas quickly and efficiently um, and in often less, the time, less time than um, human volunteers. Searchers say they'll continue to search for Kluchy Chuck until they're told not to by police. Jeanette Roche, CTV News, Lethbridge. As we mentioned, police are conducting an aerial search of the city and outlying areas right now after getting a tip that the woman was sighted downtown near Park Place Mall. Police are continuing to ask the community, particularly those on the west side, to check their garages or sheds. There is a possibility she may have gone there for shelter. If you've seen Anna or have any information, please contact police or Crime Stoppers. And coincidentally, a scathing review out of Ottawa has now meant that the, that the nation's capital is beefing up Canada's search and rescue capability. More than $16 million will be spent on improving satellite search systems, and there will be an effort to improve readiness. The federal auditor warned this week Canada's search and rescue system faces sustainability problems because of aging equipment and pilot shortages. Well, Dory, in this business, there isn't a lot that surprises you after a while. But I have to admit, on our Facebook page the other day, we got a post on a weather update from a man, Buzz, saying that he had PMS, parked motorcycle syndrome, and that the only yes. cure was some beautiful weather. And good news for you, Buzz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it was. Uh, it took me back a little bit for a moment there, but yes, there is good news on the way for Buzz and everyone else that wants to get the bikes out on the road and and uh, and that sort of thing. We've got some really nice weekend weather coming up. Some showers tomorrow morning, but they're not going to be with us for long. I'll tell you all about it in a couple of minutes. Thanks, Dory. Well, the Alberta government is suggesting it may discipline some jail guards who took part in an illegal strike. I think the Deputy Minister of Solicitor General was very clear today with respect to the fact that if there were acts that were, that were um, committed um, that put people's um, safety at risk, that those needed to be dealt with at a management level. The government says some guards who left their posts at the Edmonton Remand Centre may have put inmates, managers and other guards in danger. And it says those involved will be dealt with appropriately. The guards union says the threat of discipline breaks the government's promise of amnesty. Though the province promises that guards who merely took part won't be punished. Meantime, it's still waiting 
Game for those guards whose suspension triggered the actual strike. Todd Ross pointed out what he calls design flaws of the remand. I am currently being investigating, investigated for recent communications uh, due to an email, I believe, and I, they put me off on leave with pay until further notice, pending an investigation. The union had to pay $350,000 in fines for the strike. Canada's 21st Prime Minister is headed to Lethbridge this weekend. Former Prime Minister Paul Martin is coming to the city to speak at a Rotary conference. Over 350 Rotary members from across southern Alberta and Saskatchewan are attending the annual conference. Martin, an Aboriginal education advocate, will speak on Indigenous Canada and the importance of partnership. Suncor Energy says they're experiencing a shortage in gas and have subsequently stopped supplying gas to several stations. That includes this Petro Canada along 6th Avenue South. The signs all read zeros and unfortunately that does not mean that the gas is for free. Suncor says the supply issue stems from planned maintenance of the company's Edmonton refinery. That turned up some additional work. They say stations in Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba have just started to feel the impacts and they hope to have them back up and running soon. Well, the death of a southern Alberta motorcyclist over the weekend has been a shock to the biking community. And it comes at a time when they're trying to raise awareness about motorbikes and safety. 41-year-old Jeff Rohalla from Lethbridge was killed Saturday when his motorcycle was blown off the highway during a windstorm. Rohalla was riding his bike along Highway 505, just northwest of the St. Mary's Reservoir at the time. Other motorcyclists say Rohalla was a big part of the biking community. They say the accident was weather related but underscores the message that they're trying to get out during Motorcycle Awareness Month. Several local clubs gathered at noon today to talk about safety. Members say it's a message that always needs to be reinforced in the spring. This time of year it's really important to get used to that they're out there again. They're a little harder vehicle to see uh, because we only have a single headlight most of the time and they're a little smaller profile. People don't notice them as, as regularly or, or as easily as a normal vehicle. So the big thing is awareness. The bike's in storage for four months. Uh, first thing in the spring, uh, we basically have to learn uh, all the finer things about uh, handling a fairly big machine in sometimes some fairly tight spaces. Now drivers are asked to treat motorcyclists as they are big or as big as other vehicles and allow plenty of lane space. You're also urged to double check blind spots, back off to prevent fender benders and be extra cautious when changing lanes or pulling in front of a motorcycle because motorbikes are smaller and they may appear farther away than they actually are. The community of Picture Butte is at long last celebrating the grand reopening of their high school. Even a difficult pair of scissors couldn't keep them from cutting the ribbon and officially reopening the school this afternoon. The $13.4 million modernization project began three years ago. The original wing of the school, it was built in 1948, was demolished in February. The school remained open through it all. The principal says the project came in under budget and was long, long overdue. Boy, it, it's a lot of mixed emotions. Um, it's been really quite a journey to get to this point uh, through the whole process of, of modernization and construction. Uh, being a former student I feel a great deal of pride. We um, spent many, well quite a, a few years anyway in disruption and putting up with the construction but the end result is it, it's paid off. It was an experience and uh, learned lots along the way. The last major addition to the school was back in 1967. It'll be fresh, new, yet still familiar. New West Theatre has revealed its lineup and is promising some fun changes for the coming season. New West Theatre is known for its high energy music comedy reviews and Southern Albertans can expect more of the same this season. But you can also expect some new twist to some of the shows. The season kicks off July the 4th with a production called Country Gold, Songs of the Prairie Grass. It'll showcase songs by country legends, accented with cowboy poetry, rustic humor, and even some barn dancing. We do three music comedy review shows a year, uh, so people who come to our shows all the time really know what to expect when they come. But we also like to shake it up a little bit every now and then too, and uh, with Country Gold we're really going to try some new things with it. So I think it's going to feel really fresh and new, uh, but also feel familiar as well. 
Country Gold is the first of six productions this season. New West Theatre has also announced that it's creating an endowment fund to help keep the theatre community sustainable. Donations for the first two years are being matched by Canadian Heritage Grants. You can get more information on the New West Theatre website or through the Community Foundation of Lethbridge and Southwestern Alberta. Time now for the day's markets. Mm -hmm.